Okay, let's continue working on exponent rules and simplifying down expressions. So jumping in on this one, I noticed that we've got a couple steps. It's not going to be just one step and we're done. That's okay though. The first thing I would do is deal with this exponent on the outside of our set of parentheses. I want to bring that to the inside and I'm going to multiply each of our inner exponents by 3. So where everyone makes their mistake is they forget the 2 is actually raised to the first power as well. So that's going to be 2 raised to the third power, 1 times 3, and then x raised to the sixth power, 2 times 3. Now that's still going to be multiplied by 4x. So I can drop the parentheses if I want, or I could keep them there. All right, a little bit more simplifying down. The 2 cubed, that's 2 times 2 times 2, makes 8. x to the sixth times 4x. At this point, I'm going to focus on, we have two constants that are multiplied together. So 8 times 4 makes 32. And then we have our x's. Now these are x's that are on the same level being multiplied together. Exponents are just counting up how many copies of the base are multiplied together. So in this case, we have six copies and then one more copy all being multiplied together. So that makes seven copies total. So our final answer is going to be 32 x to the seventh. Let's think about this one, rewriting only using negative exponents. Okay, so we have that x cubed in the denominator. What I would use on this <clears throat> is I would move it up to the numerator and use a negative exponent to move it up there. Now typically this is how we want uh, our solutions to be rewritten. However, on this, because we're only supposed to be using negative exponents, it may be worth noting we could technically go a step further. All right, we have x raised to the negative exponent, but we have 5 raised to the positive first power. Technically, what we could do is we could move that 5 down to the denominator and use a negative exponent for it. So maybe if we're sticking to the letter of the law here and only using negative exponents, we could rewrite it so everything has a negative exponent. All right, what about, we went to negative exponents, what about rewriting using positive exponents? Now this one is kind of a doozy of a problem. All right, because we have a square root involved, we have a negative one third on the outside, we, we have p to the fifth power in there. So what I would probably do first is go ahead and just rewrite that square root as an exponent. So to do so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have p to the fifth power, I'm not doing anything with that right now, but that square root has an index of two. So one half as an exponent means the exact same thing as the square root over top that p to the fifth. Now this is still all raised to the negative one third power. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and try to systematically combine our exponents together. All right, let's bring along the negative one third power for the time being and just focus on what's on the inside. So on the inside here, if I want to combine those exponents together, we're going to have to multiply the exponents together. So we have 5 times 1 half is 5 halves. Then what I would do is go ahead and try to bring that exponent, the negative 1 third, into the inside. Again, that same process says we multiply our exponents. So you multiply the numerators. 5 times 1 is going to be 5 for our new exponent, our new numerator. And then you multiply the denominators, 2 times 3 is going to make 6. But a positive and a negative multiplied together gives us a negative. All right, so we still have a negative exponent. We still need to finish this up by making it a positive exponent. So in doing that, what we want to do is move it down to the denominator and make it a positive 5, 6. But we also need to keep a placeholder up in the numerator. All right, so we're going to put a 1 up in the numerator and then p to the 5 6 in the denominator. And we only have positive exponents, so that's good. What about rewriting this using exponents? Um, again, we have that square root. So square roots, we can always replace those with 1 half as an exponent because the index here is a 2. That 4 is actually being multiplied out in front. It's not the index on this radical. Okay, minus 3 over the square root of x. Oops, not 3 over the square root of x. Let's go ahead and replace that square root of x with x to the 1 half power. All right, the last thing we may want to get more and more comfortable with is 
moving that x to the one half power up into the x uh, up into the numerator and out of the denominator using a negative exponent. So four x to the one half minus three x to the negative one half. We want to get comfortable with that, even though, though the directions here did not expressly say you had to move it up into the numerator. All right, one more. Rewrite this as a radical. So down below here, you can see I did go ahead and put our rule for this, lining everything up and getting comfortable with this. All right, so writing it as a radical, the first thing I may want to do in this case is write it so it's not negative. Okay, so we can move it down to the denominator and make it a positive exponent. X raised to the positive 4 thirds power. All right, from here, we're actually starting with the right-hand side of this um, formula. And we want to line things up that the denominator is going to go as the index on the radical, whereas the numerator is going to go as an exponent. So this can be rewritten as 1 over, this will be the cube root of x, and we could say to the fourth power, or equivalently, we can say 1 over the cube root of x, and we could put the 4 on the outside if we wanted to as well, all right, because the 4 is going to go as an exponent, and the 3 is the index on the radical. All right, hope this helps out. Keep practicing them. You'll get it.